Hey folks. So today I had a really cool opportunity with a client to explain the difference between negative reinforcement and negative punishment. And really understand when and how to use each. And make a decision that will best suit the training outcome for the dog. Hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe or you can hit the notification thing as well. And I should warn you to carry on from here. You're gonna need a pretty good understanding around the language of operant conditioning. So let's take a little step back and first discuss and understand the, the difference between negative punishment and negative reinforcement. So I think a lot of the time people think or intend to use negative punishment and in fact they're actually using negative reinforcement. You see the big difference is this, right? That in order for something to be negative punishment, i.e. we take away something that the dog wanted, the dog has to want it, right? And so in a, in a session where you're training with food, if the dog no longer becomes a, a willing participant in the session, it's and you go, okay, I'm stopping this because you are distracted by that dog over there. That is not negative punishment because the dog never wanted the food anyway, right? It needs to be something that the dog is actively trying to get or is trying to solve the puzzle to earn, something along those lines, and you can go, that's incorrect, or I don't like that behavior, therefore I'm stopping this session and I'm putting you away and you lose access to food, or you lose access to the game, or you lose access to me or whatever. Something that is important, so when we distinguish punishment and negative reinforcement is negative reinforcement turns off when the behavior is correct and punishment stops wrong behaviors. And so with punishment, repetitions is quite important. And so with negative punishment, I think that smaller durations of negative punishment, i.e. repetitions, more repetitions in a session is going to be more effective. So if my dog really truly wants something um, and he's performing the wrong behavior in order to get it, I don't have to stop the session for a long duration of time. I just have to stop the session for a few minutes so that the dog experiences the loss, right? So that like, now, now the circumstance would be this, if, Imagine I'm in the park and I'm using food to train my dog and my dog decides that there's something else he's more interested in. Of course, I'm gonna stop the session. I'm not gonna just allow him to just go do that, right? But immediately I know in my mind, my food is not the reinforcer that I wanted it to be. So now I'm at a decision point. Am I gonna use negative punishment or am I gonna use negative reinforcement? Because if I stop the session and say, well, you get no access to food and I'm gonna wait until you're hungry, that is actually step one in building the pressure that would be negative reinforcement that pressure is hunger. And so stopping for 10 minutes is gonna have very little effect on that. That is if you are making the conscious choice to use negative reinforcement. But if I identify my dog doesn't actually want this food that I have, right? Because he's chosen to leave, he knows it's available, he's done a few reps prior to this new distraction, this new motivator turning up, and now my dog chooses to go over there and interact with that dog. That dog is actually now my reinforcer. And if I want to be effective in my session, I should stop, yes. But when I put my dog away, I need to know, okay, my food that I was training with is not effective anymore. What is going to be an effective reinforcer is interaction with that dog or whatever it is that was stealing my dog from me whilst I was trying to train with food. So I can totally put my dog away for five minutes, if that, right? And then I can get him out again. But if that dog is still there or whatever it was that was causing the issue to start with, I can now use that as my reinforcer rather than the food if it's still there because that and 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 assuming that it's safe for my dog to interact with that like if it, if we're teaching a dog not to you know if it's an aggressive dog or the other dog is aggressive or whatever it is right then this is a this is a system we can't use we do have to go back to the negative reinforcement via food but if it is safe to have my dog interact with that and he's already told me right away I want that more than I want that food then my mindset needs to change where I say, okay, 
I am going to stop the session. I'm going to put you away. But because I intend to punish you for checking out on me, I don't need to do this for a long period of time. I don't need anything to build up. I don't need you to get any hungrier. I'm going to bring you out in five minutes. You're going to have experienced the feeling of loss of what you wanted. I'm going to ask for a couple of behaviors. And then my reinforcer is not going to be this food. It's going to be the thing that you checked out on me for anyway, because now I know that's what you want, right? Now, that's how I would deal with that session in the moment when it happens. I'm gonna hit that decision tree and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go negative reinforcement or negative punishment, I'm gonna choose that. But later and away from that session, I'm absolutely going to then reassess my value of my reinforcers. And I'm gonna, if my dog were to not take food because he wants to go and play with another dog, or if my dog, I mean, worst case scenario, if I have my toy type reinforcer and I'm playing with the dog and my dog chooses to disengage from me and go and play with another dog or whatever that environmental thing is, that of course in that moment, because I have to make my session good, I'm gonna hit that decision point, go left or right. But later, I'm going to absolutely find a way to increase the value of the thing that I was reinforcing the dog with. Because I, you know, it's unacceptable to me that my dog leaves in the, like, the food that I'm offering to go play with another dog. He has to learn that that's not okay because that's what's going to be there. But I, in that moment, to make advantage of, to take the best of a bad situation, I'm going to use that other dog as a reinforcer, presuming it's safe to do so, right? But, that's, I think, where most people you know, drastically misunderstand the difference between negative reinforcement and negative punishment. And negative punishment, it, it gets kind of uh, sold to us as being not so bad, right? Where when it's done properly, it's horrific. It's the worst thing the dog can imagine. It's not physical. The dog is going to be totally fine, but it's a total loss, right? Like he had a bunch of things that he wanted. He performed a behavior that we didn't want, and now he lost everything that he wanted, right? And he's isolated and he's by himself, and he's just thinking about what was, what was it that led to that uh, happening? And that's why with negative punishment, if you intend to do proper negative punishment, you're better off doing it three or four times in a session or as many times as it takes in a session because then the dog will better understand the exact event that led to the punishment. Because what will happen the first time, if you're training the dog to do a bunch of sits and you're using food and then he sees another dog and goes, oh, I'm gonna go play with that dog. And then you go, all right, like we're finished and I put you away the dog is not going to be 100% sure that that was, we can use a marker and of course we should use some sort of negative punishment marker where we say, no, you've done the wrong thing, but he's not going to be 100% sure that that was the event that led to him losing access to not just what he wanted, but the session and everything in total, right? We need to give him another opportunity to experiment with that, do it again and confirm for himself, oh, this was it, right? So that's where people go like, oh, how many times do we have to do this? Well, probably two, maybe three, right? Bef before the dog will go, right, this is for sure what is getting me put away and me losing access to it. I won't do that again because punishment stops things. Negative reinforcement will cause the dog, if we just make him hungrier, will cause the start of something and that will start engagement onto us, right? So under Understanding that decision point and knowing for sure, am, of course I'm putting the dog away. If this has gone bad, I'm not just gonna let it unfold and go bad. But when I put him away is my intent to build pressure via negative reinforcement and that requires time if I'm using food or is my intent to punish via negative punishment and that does not require anywhere near as much time. What it requires is a total loss for a short duration. Then the whole thing coming back and we watch very closely and we see, do we need to do that again?